Welcome to our devotion this morning. We are going to continue where we left off looking at this key subject of truth. What is truth? The question that we said was posed by Pontius Pilate uh, to Jesus. And uh, we are going to explore this uh, along different lines over the next few days. I'm again grateful for the writings of Craig Rochelle and Rabbi Zacharias. Alice McGraw and others who have shed so much insight on uh, this topic. And I want to begin by looking at uh, Acts chapter 16. And so uh, we, I want to take up the reading after Paul and Silas were, were stripped and beaten and then they were thrown into prison. Uh, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. And then in verse 24, uh, when he received these orders, he put them in the, in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up. And when he saw the prison doors open, he, threw, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. So just so far, now, last week we mentioned two common belief systems or philosophies called relativism and subjectivism. And remember, relativism is the assumption that there's no such thing as absolute truth. So when it comes to faith and matters that relate to eternity, for example, you often hear it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you are sincere. What is true for you is not necessarily true for, for me. After all, there are many ways to get to God. And for anyone to claim that they have the only way to God, it's just kind of bigoted and narrow-minded. And this is what you hear all the time. Uh, even Oprah Winfrey says it doesn't matter what path you take as long as you are sincere in what you believe and everyone will get to heaven. Now the aim of these devotions, as I mentioned at the outset, is not to kind of get into some long apologetic argument that counters such a notion, but rather to just use this as a typical example of what happens when you, you kind of consider the truth to just be relative. Uh, you know, you believe what you, you want to believe. I believe what I want to believe. Uh, and I'm sure we'll all end up in the same place. Well, C.S. Lewis argued at length as to why such a notion is just absurd. And we will just touch on that a little later. So if we, as we've just read in Acts 16, you know, Paul and Silas are imprisoned at midnight. They decide to have something of a kind of worship service. They're singing hymns and praying and so on. And God sends an earthquake that miraculously breaks open the prison doors. The chains are, are, are broken. They're released. Uh, and, of course, the jailer freaks out because he knows that uh, if the prisoners escape, uh, his life is on the line. I mean, anybody who allowed a prison to escape back then would immediately be put to death. And so he's about to, to take his life because he sees the prisoners are gone. And, and Paul shouts, don't harm yourself, we all hear. And the jailer calls for lights, and then we read that he comes uh, trembling, falls at their feet, and asks this profound question, what must I do to be saved? You see, he wants, he wants an answer. He wants to know, what must I do to be saved? And the on, obvious answer to, to such a question would be, you know, it depends on who you ask. Uh, you know, surely it depends on who you ask that question to, right? I mean, you could ask that question to a lot of different people today and get a whole range of answers from kind of doing nothing, uh, from 
jumping through a whole lot of hoops, uh, kind of adhering to a whole lot of do's and don'ts, as is so often true of people in churches today, or putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Interestingly, in a, in a survey that was done by the Barna Institute some years ago, 53% of people believe that, that, you know, that if you're generally good, you'll go to heaven. Uh, 57% of those who, who claim to be true believers say that it doesn't really matter what religion you follow because you know, all faiths teach us similar lessons about life and death. And those who pursue those religions all have the same destiny. Well, that's kind of a scary stat when you think about it, because it kind of raises the question, what is truth? Can truth, can so many different things be true? Surely not. So the key question to be asking, is it true that all world religions basically are the same and mostly true and that all lead to eternal life? Well, let us, in answering that question, consider three basic kind of statements or, or uh, yeah, tenets, I would call them, that help us to, to shed light on that question. Touch on the first and, and just touch on the second today uh, uh, before we look at the third tomorrow. So the first is simply being sincere doesn't make what you believe to be true. And, you know, that is a logically accurate statement, I think. I mean, for those of you who watch The Voice or Idols and similar programs on TV, I mean, during the, the, the audition period, hundreds appear before a panel of judges in an attempt to convince them that they have a, a talent for singing. And you, when you watch some of them, you, you can't believe that they're actually there. You can't believe that they actually believe they can sing. And yet they believe sincerely that they can sing. And most of them leave very disappointed because they don't, the panel agrees that they can't. You see, just because you believe that you can sing doesn't mean it's true. And often when I watch them, I wonder, you know, why, you know, does their family really care for them? Do their friends really care for them? I mean, if you really cared for someone and you knew that they couldn't sing, why would you encourage them to go and almost humiliate themselves in front of a national audience? It doesn't make any sense. And so I think we can agree that just because you believe something to be true doesn't mean that it's necessarily true. The second uh, uh, statement is there is truth in many world religions but all world religions can't be true so let me say that again there is truth in all world religions but not every world religion can be true there can be truth in many different religions for example most world religions teach that life is sacred and i think we could all agree with that um, many teach that there is more to life than this to which we would agree in most of the world religions, there's a common thread in terms of teachings around morality and, and some of the areas of relationships and how to treat people and how to live virtuously and, and so on. And again, I think those are the soft issues. And I think in, in many of those issues, we can, we can agree. But it is the core issues that really matter, isn't it? It's the key issues, not the, the soft issues. And there is a huge difference in, in what world religions uh, teach and uh, adhere to in terms of the core issues. At their foundation, there are no two religions that are the same. There's no possible way we can conclude, therefore, that they are all essentially the same or all true. That's an illogical statement. And tomorrow we could explore exactly why I say that. Why is it illogical to say that all religions are basically true? So, simply being sincere doesn't make what you believe to be true, and that there's truth in many world religions, but not all world religions are true, and we'll explore that a little more tomorrow. Let's turn to the Lord in a moment of prayer, shall we? Lord, we just thank you for your word. We just thank you, Lord, for the truth, and we know the truth will set us free. We pray, Lord God, that we might consider the subject in the light of our faith, in the light of world religions, in the light of 
those who say that just to be sincere is all that matters. Lord, we just pray that we might come to understand that sincerity is not enough, that we need to to understand the absolute truth. And as we said at the outset, you are that absolute truth. May we come to know you and may we come to learn what it is to, to know you as Savior and Lord. And so bless us as we continue into this day and may we just continue to think about these things and grapple with these things because they are such key issues in our world today. And so we commit ourselves to you and pray that you'd go before us into this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll bless you all. Have a great day and we'll catch up with you tomorrow. Amen.